Hey everyone, my name is Hamilton. I'm an alt process and film photographer. And today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different than we normally do. We're actually gonna be doing a live shoot using the Holga camera. We're gonna be doing it in a studio setting. And this is something that I've never done before. I'm used to taking the Holga out in the field uh, because it just, it shoots better with natural sunlight. You know, you have that bright sunlight and you're generally gonna get some really nice images. I've actually never shot a Holga in a studio setting. So I'm not really sure what to expect. So we're gonna set this up. We're gonna try to, you know, accommodate for all the little eccentricities about the Holga and see if we can't, you know, create some really nice images in a studio setting with the Holga, which seems a little counterintuitive because one of the, the beautiful things about this camera is you're not really sure what you're gonna get when you're shooting with this. You know, there's a little bit of, you know, there's a little bit of mystery when you're shooting with a camera. And so I'm going to try and set up something where I can take more control over the images that I'm getting with this and see what we can do. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about how to shoot with a Holga in a studio setting and try to get some really nice images indoors, uh, then this video is for you. Okay, so we know that there's a few things with the Holga that we can control. Uh, the Holga has two aperture settings. There's one that's cloudy and one that's bright. So you're gonna either be using an F8 or an F11 aperture. And we know that it has a fixed shutter speed of one one hundredth of a second. So I've set the camera to cloudy to compensate for that because you know the Holga is notoriously bad at shooting interior scenes. And I'm hoping to offset that. We've got a really nice light right here that should give us enough, I'm hoping, I've got a grid on this to kind of offset it. If we need to, we're gonna try and take off that grid to get more light in the scene. Um, but I'm really trying to get a really nice light on the side of the face and just have the rest kind of fall off into shadow. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I have the light set up here. I'm gonna try and meter to get F8 at one one hundredth of a second. And I'm using um, Portra 400 film in here. So I'm gonna try and get as close as I can to that and see what we can do. Um, also, I'll be using the portrait setting on the Holga. Obviously, we're shooting portraits, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. It focuses at one meter or about three feet. So I've set up some tape on the ground and we're gonna be basically standing there and trying to get some really nice shots. A lot of times when you're out in the field with the Holga, I don't have a tape measure with me. I'm kind of estimating the distance. I've measured the distance to try and get a really nice sharp focus. Let's see what we can do. Thankfully, my girlfriend Stephanie has offered to model for me tonight. The first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna meter this scene, see if I can get close to F8, uh, one one hundredth of a second for the shutter speed, and, um, and I'll have a better idea if we're gonna need to take the, uh, the grid off or not on the light. Oh no. I'm not getting anywhere near what I need to be getting. So I was not even close to one one hundredth of a second for my, my shutter speed. Uh, I've taken off the grid. I'm, I'm blasting light here. I'm gonna move the light closer. And I kind of I kind of had a feeling that I would need to take the grid off, but I love shooting with the grid, so I, I just wanted to be sure. So this is one of the reasons why the whole is just notoriously bad in an indoor setting. You just need so much light. So I'm gonna try to move the, the softbox closer, see if we can get some more light on the subject. All right, so I'm still a little bit underexposed. We're gonna go with it anyway. I've got 1 60th of a second. I think the photos are gonna come out dark. Hopefully we can get enough light on this side of the face and just have this kind of fall off into some hard shadows. That's kind of the hope here. Honestly, if you're gonna be shooting interiors with a Holga, I think you're gonna need something better than Portrait 400 to really crank up that ISO and, and get some nice images. But we're gonna try it. You know, this is an experiment, so let's, uh, let's give it a whirl. All right, I want you to look directly at the light. <laughs> Uh, just look at me. Perfect. Hold that pose for me. Just very natural. Got it. Do that. I'm standing exactly three feet away. Get from this side. Get some of the shadows look past me. Yep. No, don't look at me. Look past. Beautiful. Hold that. I love it. All right, let's do something a little, little different here. Okay. That didn't sound good. Sound like I had a little, little bump there in the Holga. I don't know what's happening. We'll find out when we get it up. All right, let's do something weird. Can you put your hands in front of your face? 
like you're crying. Yeah, it's perfect. Band-aids are great. Just like you're crying. No, it's not gonna be on the video. <laughs> it's not gonna be on the video. Just like a little, you know, just something like that. Yep. Perfect, got it. She doesn't know what's going on. I'm gonna get you from this side here. Okay, can you look really sad for me? No, like, like heartbroken, just, just torn asunder. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. That's the sad stuff that we love here. Uh-oh, yeah, something's going on weird here. I keep hearing this, this popping inside. Not a good sign. Not a good sign when you're rolling through and they hear this popping. Uh, we've got a few more shots. I'm gonna try a different light. I'm gonna try to get this closer to you, right up on you. About three feet away still. Look right at me, beautiful. Okay. Perfect. I think it's one more shot and we're done. And you go through a roll real quick. Okay. Yep, like that. Beautiful. Hold that. Let me go from this side. Perfect. I think that's all my film. Yep. Cool. All right. We are out of film. Let's get these developed and hopefully we, we have some images. Um, I'm a little nervous because I wasn't getting that one one hundredth of a second. It would be a little underexposed, but hopefully it'll have that, that mood and atmosphere that I'm trying to do. And that is my puppy. That mood and atmosphere that I'm trying to do with the, the plastic lens here. Let's give it a whirl. So the big takeaway from all of this is that the Holga is capable of shooting well in a studio environment. However, you either need a massive amount of light or you need a really high ISO for your film. But overall, I did get the, the drop off that I want. With this really nice light coming in from the side, it barely wraps and we have this strong shadow on the left side. So I accomplished the look that I was going out for. I just think there's a few things I would do differently. Namely, you know, I had an issue with the development of the film. Um, so that's why we're getting a lot of these weird striations and agitation marks on the film itself. I also think that I would get rid of the background. I don't think you need a background for this. I think if you're shooting, you know, in a studio setting with a whole girl, I don't think you do a background. I think you just have the subject just surrounded by darkness. I think I lose something having that, that backdrop behind, behind Stephanie. But we're still getting some of that classic Holga look. I mean, there's some weird light leaks coming in from the sides. The, the hair especially, there's this softness to the edges of it that I, that I absolutely love. Marking the, the floor, the three feet away from the subject, I'm able to get a really nice focus as well. So overall, I'm really pleased with this. So as far as the test goes, I think this was a success for me. There's a few of these images especially that I, I really like. They have this, this mood and softness to them that I'm really attracted to and I'm looking forward to exploring you know, with the whole guy in the studio setting more. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let me know what you thought about this video. I'd love to hear some comments from you guys. If you like this sort of content, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. And as always, guys, just remember, the darkroom isn't dead.